welcome you to this uh, second panel where we want to have a kind of a perception uh, uh, to the valley from, from the outside. But uh, to start, I, I would like to introduce um, uh, our guests. Um, Momoyo Kaijima to my right. Uh, she is a Japanese architect based in Tokyo. She studied <coughs> architecture in Tokyo and Zurich. I hope this is correct. Um, in 1992, she established a practice at the Libawa together with uh, Yoshiharu uh, Tsukomoto. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, she taught and published uh, um, worldwide and uh, with a, a lot of success. In uh, 2003, 2016, she was engaged as guest professor at GSD in Harvard uh, between 2005 and 2007 at ETH Zurich, where she is now uh, again as a full professor since 2017, mm -hmm. right? And um, yeah, um, I'm lucky to, to know you since many years when we met first at uh, Laurent's place <laughs> in Zurich. <laughs> Uh, so, thank you for being here. Then, um, also to my right, uh, Jonathan Surgeson. Jonathan is a British architect based in London and Zurich. He graduated as an architect in 1989 and gained experience with David Chipperfield and Tony Fretton. He established his practice, uh, Surgeson Bates, in 1996 together with Stephen Bates. In 2010, he moved to Zurich, where he opened a second studio. He has taught as well in many different places, such as London, Lausanne, Zurich, and Harvard. And then, in 2008, he was appointed as a full professor at Academia in Mendrisio. And I think this was a, also a reason to, to move to Switzerland. And... Um, yeah, since 2015 we are uh, neighbors, which <laughs> makes me really proud, <laughs> and it's nice to see you here in a different, <laughs> in a different place. Um, um, then uh, the, our third uh, guest, Jaume Mayol, is this more or less correct? Perfect. Uh, Jean is a Spanish architect based in Mallorca. He graduated from ETSA in uh, Valle. Alice. Together with Irene Perez, he runs the studio uh, TED A Architects. Uh, they combine their practice as well with teaching. Uh, you taught in Stuttgart, uh, at TU Graz, then Munich, I read. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, uh, you have an engagement at Kunstakademie Düsseldorf, which is also a great, uh, a great university. And we met uh, for the first time, but uh, uh, I'm also glad that you are here. So welcome, sure. everybody. Good. Um, then maybe to before we we step into um, the, the the discussion about the the, the subject of tonight, we uh, would like to see for some um, short. Uh, inputs, and I see it's up to you, Momoyo. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, about five minutes. Yes. yes. Just a few thoughts. Yes. Uh, so that we can gather some yeah. content for. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for a great opportunity to present and share my thinking and also exchange what we can do. So in for Engadin. So that's that's great. And uh, yeah, uh, Engadin window I name. So I think uh, I'm also studied to uh, study about the window. So not only for Switzerland, not only for uh, Japanese, uh, we try to collect the different kind of window from all over the world. 
and because the window is also a very interesting element of uh, uh, architectural language, but also including the people living condition and also climate and also sometimes uh, cooking, <laughs> so they need also some window and ventilation and a lot of things coming into as uh, a historical point of view, but today it's updating the uh, global economical or ecological things. So that's why so window uh, I really interesting the topic. But also the window could be repeated several times as a common language in the society. And the first is why I found the ground. So this is a very interesting. So, for example, 1970s in Japan, uh, we were also industrialized. Uh, a lot of things changed to the historical uh, so moment to the update into the global kind of economy. And then, so one uh, photographer and also the architect and also thinker, the collaborator made one book, it's called Alps. And then also at the same time, uh, uh, there is another uh, re researcher and architect. He, she also, um, he also doing the, some village the research. So that we call the, this generation is a field research generation. And uh, they shoot a lot of um, beautiful photographs and drawings. And uh, for example, this is a uh, uh, Kojiro lab, so the Meiji University. So they focusing on the fisherman village. So it's retained a very beautiful harbor, and each uh, fisherman has a own fish boat. So in the front of their house, it's still keeping. So it's almost a national, I think, heritage becomes. So that's why. So. Uh, you can visit when you, after COVID, <laughs> maybe you can visit also very beautiful things. But uh, it's also the, uh, very interesting. But at the same time, another book shows the, this guarda, yes. <laughs> because that means the Japanese uh, architects and the photographer, very famous, uh, Yukio Futagawa, uh, so he, they came here to take a photograph and make a drawing to publish the two Japanese audience and the same time the global audience. And you know, like a very famous fountain and covering the very beautiful so paintings or houses. And also they make a, a nice uh, uh, drawings for it to see how the fountain or water is very related to the stube and the living room and uh, watching each other. So that, that may be like a, for Japanese has a very big discovery and the sympathy. So what they had and what Japanese uh, uh, village had. And also the man. Well, this is more modern, so later. So the, my uh, my partner Yoshiharu Tsukamoto and his laboratory. So try to collect the uh, worldwide uh, the window. What I explained before, and uh, this windowscape project also that they visited the this guard and score and some area to take the uh, measurement and also same times to the photographing and understanding and so on. So. And also the, when I came back to the 2017, so in ETH to start to teach, and uh, I also very interested about the window in Switzerland. So because, uh, as I mentioned, the Switzerland has a so different kind of window, and also Alps has a very, very strong climate. So a lot of sunlight, but at the same time very cold up and down the temperature. So that's why, so how they organize for it. And then uh, my chair is trying to explain to the how the form uh, relate to the background, so people's behavior and also climate behavior and also building behavior we call <laughs> so kind of transformation of the typology. And then we collect the different window from in Switzerland and the rural window, urban window, and collect productive window. <coughs> and we make also some fastly, so we try to understand what it is. Maybe like a language also related. But finally, we switched a bit different chapter, but first period, for example, uh, German culture or Swiss, uh, French culture, the Italian culture, so the Romanish culture, so maybe they have a difference. But uh, more like uh, oriented to the rural area or urban area, so several topics overlapping but one of these yeah this this uh, uh, guarda so village and then so we did the uh, seminar <coughs> week to visit this region uh, including this region 
And uh, yeah, Urs, thank you. <laughs> so he guided he guide, uh, us to, to, yes, uh, to his house and uh, project. And uh, so it was very fascinating. So why the, the stube and the window and uh, connecting to the, each other. So that we understood very so good way. And also like a transformation, the windows are time, time, time. So they're like a shopping shop uh, becomes a large window or agriculture uh, changed to the different way. So that's kind of a relationship with the industry and the window form are also the very representative as a, the facade. So, so that's why so like uh, maybe today discussion might be so like uh, which period we can go back to the history, but same time how we can use utilize this updated situation in our uh, usage on uh, uh, our life. So, And um, we also find uh, several interesting things. And also students, one of the students select the site of the, the guarda and then transforms uh, some spaces with uh, using the language of the window to create a new uh, center part of the gallery next to the square. Mm -hmm. And the process, so he collects also the several window situation, how related to the industry. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's very uh, fascinating. So how the window has different function and a lot of uh, thinking. So, and also beauty of the opening. So yeah, that is his piece. And uh, yes, his proposal. Yeah, so I think um, um, maybe like, uh, I'm also the not the, the this region, so but uh, I also bring some students from ETH to go to the rural area, Valley or uh, Goms, so to understand the urban rural exchange commons. So we explain. So yeah, because uh, I think uh, now the many people are gathering to more the urban situation, and then the rural area has a little bit less density, but also the conflict of the secondary house and the tourism. So. So that's why so uh, different uh, the levels comes out. So that's why so I think uh, ETH student uh, or and also including the architects and the normal people. <laughs> uh, so how Switzerland had a very very interesting uh, uh, treasure uh, they had before, but how. Uh, you can, or well, we can, so to relay, make a good relay to the future. So that's that's a really interesting topic. But same time, it's very very. So uh, we need more discussion to find it a good solution. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who wants to continue, Jonathan? I'm sitting so comfortably. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh, up I to can. you. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Thank you. So the, I, I go also comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's my turn then. <laughs> um, well, first of all, Roger, um, uh, thank you so much for, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be to be here to, to share some thoughts and to and to enjoy about our job, no? These discussions, no? Thanks for the presentation also. Um, well. Um, on, 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 on one hand, I want to drop in um, the discussion about, about what identity means and how identity can be built and what building identity means. No? Uh, well, identity comes from the Latin word idem, no? that means repeat. Then the identity of a certain place is created by the repetition of a certain, let's say, topic. On one hand, we can say that what we all probably love, that it's the traditional identity of a certain place. Um, it's based on local resources, no? What do we have and what can we do with the things we have? No? This is the topic that all around the world we find with a lot of different, uh, wide range of architectures, but we all that are here, we all love those architectures because they are coherent, they are, um, let's say, original. That means it comes from origin. No? And it, it consists on, rep on this repetition, no? and it's the way of working of tradition no? that Every repetition is never repetition itself. It's a step forward. It's a 
it's perfecting the previous test, no? Every repetition becomes better and better and better and better. And everything is related to local, not only to local materials, but to local climate. And with this climate, we create, let's say, no local typologies, no? Uh, in our island, in the Mediterranean Sea, we have the patio typology, for example. But not only as a typology, as a funny stuff, no? It's a machine that loses a lot of heat because it's size double facade rather than a house here in Switzerland that needs to be compact, not, not to lose heat. Let's, see, let's say the opposite of a, an igloo, you know, that is the perfect shape of not losing sheet, um, heat. You know? Then typologies, you know? and then uh, everything becomes kind of a repetition of the previous one, and from the impluvium to nowadays um, uh, patio, there is a transformation step by step, step by step, but with a very a slow repetition. You know? After this very short introduction, what I want to talk, on the other hand, is about uh, our island, no? I'm coming from Mallorca, as, as it was said, and probably when you, most of you, think of our island, you have an idea. And I can uh, have some intuition of <laughs> what you think. But I want to drop on this, let's say, uh, kind of violent uh, activity of tourism, no? Uh, when we were coming with Roger to here, he mentioned the word pressure. There is some pressure in the area, no? And that's it. Um, I want to just, it's just eight slides, no? it's not that, that long. But to go over this topic of identity in two moments, no? Over the postcards, no? Postcards mm -hmm. that were sent, I don't know when, this one for example, but uh, this is the yeah, in the north part of the, the island, no? You see these typologies, uh, Italianesque stuff, no? Uh, kind of these loggias, no? All about patios, no? Patio as a, as a, 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 a water collector, patio as a, a representative space, uh, patio as a, as a heating system, no? As a ventilation system, no? And this patio was repeated once and again, no? And the postcards, at that moment, were about this kind of identity. The identity that you probably uh, don't see from abroad, no? Mm. This kind of identity, always related to this. I just took one of the topics, no? To, to make it very simple, no? But at a certain moment, <laughs> this happened. This is the. Um, let's say 70s, no? But it started in the 19th century, as we say, as we know. Uh, and you find here, most of the photo is about people. But you have some new typologies here. You have helados Cuba. No, that means ice creams Cuba, from Cuba. I don't know what's <laughs> done, what's about it, no? We have a kind of, uh, some furniture that is super common there. It's called a kind of the translation is a, a, a lazy share, lazy share, less to be like no. Um, there is some, uh, uh, let's say, a traditional architecture still there, but in these terms, everything is accepted. <laughs> everything is accepted. Oh. Then you lose somehow identity very quickly. Because their repetition, it's super heavy. It's very intense, no? Very intense. Tradition, it's kind of low fire cooking, no? But this is McDonald's stuff, no? It's something completely different, no? And they change not only the activity that could be acceptable, let's say, to have a camel in our beaches, no problem, no? To have some Mexican hat, no problem. <laughs> But it also changes this, no? Oh. It also changes the landscape. They are building on the dunes. They are building, they are transforming our ecosystem. N nowadays, the, the island is not breathing in that part of the island. Mm. They are changing not only the aspect. The aspect is, I, I don't mind about it. They change the nature of the island itself. Mm. 
That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I will let you alone also. You had eight slides. I have many, <laughs> and I'm going to go very quickly. <laughs> but firstly, it's such a pleasure to be here. I feel like I was here recently with you, Roger, but it was really on a screen and with memory. And while you were doing this wonderful work with your students at ETH, I was working with my students at the Academia on a study of another beautiful corner of Switzerland. Mm. And that's what I would like to share, this work, which is perhaps a statement on the need to be careful. <laughs> and the other bit in the puzzle was, Huami, it was wonderful that you followed this semester's work. So, oh, do you think we could take the lights down? Is that possible? Just quickly? Um, <laughs> okay, but maybe it's complicated. Uh, this is a, a very remote corner of this country, the Valley de Muggio, with Mendricio and Chiasso at the bottom of this image. For me, it is a place I've come to know. We have a home there, and it's a secret corner of Switzerland. And you will find your whole memory of my talk will have disappeared in the morning. You won't remember being here. Because <laughs> we'd like to keep it secret. And, you know, during the COVID period, for me, it made sense to turn our attention to a place that was very, very local to the academia, where the students could walk. And our studies really looked at seven settlements that can be found in the Valley de Muggio, a place that has an exquisite quality um, in, of course, the Italian-speaking world. We found ourselves looking at historical records and realizing that this was a very poor living that existed for a long, long time. And interestingly, how settlements have reduced the amount of agricultural production and the uh, networks of terraces that sustain the villages have been reduced. It should be added that the real economy in this part of Switzerland was smuggling. And so these, this uh, search for historical records shows the logic of building very compactly in a very difficult terrain where anything that can be turned to agriculture is precious. So the work was really organized around three strands. The first was survey, um, the need to look carefully at the physical conditions of these seven settlements. And we were also inspired by a wonderful record that Aldo Rossi was involved in looking at the territory of, of Ticino and perhaps inspired by those drawings that Rossi and Reinhardt and uh, um, Reichling and others made. But also, I remember you, Roger, referring to the Rossi plan, the record that was made by ETH students of Zurich. So this act of survey is about looking carefully and documenting the place that is found and discovering and making acquaintances. So many drawings and other kinds of drawings that show how the terrace network has been reduced mm -hmm. and a an attempt to understand the marvelous architecture in this place. So, from the act of survey, we then moved to a work which um, was more propositional and considered strategies for how these seven settlements could be adjusted. 
And this record that the students made is very important because it tells me that the villages sustain themselves as a sort of network of sharing resources. So not every village has a shop mm -hmm. and not every village has a post office. And some villages have a cultural offer in the form of a museum. And it's this level of overall sustaining of facility that we find very helpful in terms of understanding what needs to be done in the future. And what was very much part of our work was this sense that over 10 years, we've observed that making one house can really do a lot of damage. And it was from this study and propositional work, which then led to precise projects that even suggest how houses could be placed and designed in the future. Um, there were also other studies that suggest a very precise limit on the expansion of a settlement, how circulation is organized. Um, and always the sense that places can be adjusted very delicately to bring uh, a helpful uh, improvement. And a drawing like this I really appreciate, which is just full of observation and comment. And the students were careful to document with every house how they're used and who owns them. And this sense of a, a documenting of the demographics of the, the valley was mm. part of their assessment. And then later on from this um, collection of strategies, the students then developed in more detail, precise projects as a more explicit form of proposition. And in all of the work, there was always a question of the image and the representational character of any new building and the manner in which it sits in relation to this marvellous older architectural mm -hmm. um, patrimony. And this image is a model that one of the students made. You perhaps have to look hard to find that project. It is incredibly um, in keeping. And finally, a project for Monte. Good, that's the last image. Five minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful images, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Go to the center. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is another one last input also uh, from my side. Yeah. Um. Christian, do you need this? Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I noted some thoughts and observations and uh, made a few sentences that I would like to read. It's also about identity, maybe coming a bit closer to, to the place where we are. Um, houses and buildings, and thus also the architectural identity of a place, are always expressions of a living culture. It is therefore telling to ask what characterizes this culture in the Engadine historically but and, uh, sorry, and at present. Which aspects of the built identity are inherited structures of, the, of a past area, era and which reflect um, the present. Um, one might begin with a very rush periodization. Um, we have an early period, let's say 16th to 18th century, um, with the Engadine house. We had a, a closed rural valley, a local culture. Then um, we have another phase, in the, mainly in the 19th century. I call it Italian house because uh, the valley started to open it. We, there were uh, a lot of re returnees, also people coming back from Italy, from Austria, and they brought in other cultural 
I ideas and um, um, one can see those houses in Lavin, but also in Saint, in many different um, uh, expressions. Then there was, after uh, 1850 or so, until the 30s, there was this great period of the Grand Hotel. I called it Europeanization. So there was a cultural, first cultural influx of foreigners here in the valley. And then a fourth period um, after World War II, uh, the 50s, till today, um, represented by the second home, and I called it uh, globalization. So it's, it's again a cultural entry by foreigners, combined with a, it's also a bit polemically said, a buying up of the acquisition of uh, property. And um, I also would like to talk about that tonight. Mm. So, since the beginnings of the 19th century, at the latest, we see not one homogeneous culture, but multiple parallel overlapping, potentially hybrid phenomena. Rural patterns meet urban ones, local patterns clash with global ones. The questions that arise here, besides the before mentioned parallelisms, are there interactions, synergies, or any similar phenomena? And if so, where and how do they become, become productive? Or where are they perhaps uh, destructive? How do the large and obvious economic asymmetries influence, influence these interactions? The subject of today's discussion is the perception of the engine from the outside. This perception is and has been to a large extent determined by the media. What we understand as architectural identity is thus shaped to a large extent by images and words. In the specific case of the Engendine, these images and words serve, among other things, our desire for the so-called authentic, a very popular and at the same time highly contradictory motive in tourism. What does this image-driven identity mean for the actual physical space? In the essay, City Without the Body, on the phenomenon uh, of the temporary city Upper Engadine, I questioned the possibility of an immediate physical experience of that type of city. On one hand, because tourists tend to confirm the mental images which they already brought along through a selective perception of what they find on site. On the other hand, according to a thesis in the essay, because their spatial perception is primarily composed of interior spaces and framed views of the exterior. exterior. I think this started with the Grand Hotel. This limited perception tends to leave out the climate, for example, which is in, uh, in my which in my view is fundament a fundamental factor for the culture of the Engadine and thus also for the architectural identity, the weather, the extreme temperatures, the snow in winter and the dryness in summer. Momoyo also referred to this uh, issue related to windows. But I wonder, how can one perceive an engine in house that has central heating, which is also capable of conditioning the large volume of the barn part, which large portions of glazing? How do we perceive a landscape that we look at through the panoramic window of a conditioned room? Thank you. So... <laughs> um, Thank you again for your really uh, impressive uh, presentation with a lot of beautiful images, Jonathan. Um, I would like to step in now uh, in this uh, discussion. It's maybe not so easy because we had now uh, very different uh, contributions. So um, I would like to start with a very simple question. Um, uh, about your the, the first contact um, with the valley, uh, uh, you have been here, obviously. Mm. <laughs> you showed images. Mm. So, when was that? Uh, what was your first impression? What yes. what, what did you yeah. reflect? Yeah, uh, I was uh, faster, maybe 1996. 
yeah, it's quite uh, 20, <laughs> 25 years ago, almost. And then, so, because, uh, yeah, as I show, so, like, uh, this uh, monograph, uh, this uh, book right. is very famous, and then for Japanese, is uh, yeah, I wish to come, so, to this beautiful village. So, that's why so I came, so, with Yoshiro and other, my friends, to drive in car, <laughs> to come up, and then, yeah, it's really so fun, fascinating. And um, I think also the like uh, uh, drawing is also very beautiful. But at the same time, so this is a fast journey for visiting the different Swiss villages, not only uh, Graubünden, but also the other part of the... Oh, we take a uh, car and one to another mm -hmm. little village mm -hmm. to traveling around. So that's why so we went also Furuka Pass and Oba and the Brieg and so coming back to the my kind of grand tour in <laughs> Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So that's why so my me personally is very very I like to the like uh, understanding the the village or like a city character. Mm -hmm. Also not only the building but also the like uh, settlement how settle and also like if we visit ah for example this terrace on the valley has a very sunny side or like uh, this has uh, avoiding the avalanche and so on so that there is a lot of uh, in meaning of the position of the place mm -hmm. and also like uh, this kind of village has also a strong character from the central part to growing 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 mm -hmm. or like uh, sometimes the development of the in a small village itself but also if somebody my recently for example we see also the some suburbanized <laughs> some house a secondary house or like a cattle new barn so to cannot build in the center so that's why so like it becomes a split so so maybe so this kind of character is also we see 1996 maybe it's not so clear so on this Switzerland I think but uh, now I coming back here so I see also a lot of difference the last 25 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. so that's why so I'm wondering yeah Switzerland where are you going <laughs> so, <laughs> but this, this is uh, also the I always try to ask to my students yeah, of course I want to do, but it's very different the last 25 years. Very different. What are you going to? So that is uh, always my question. So to me and also to mm -hmm. others, yes. For you it's the first time today. It is. What was your first impression? I, I think I jumped directly to your fourth moment, no? And I had uh -huh. this, the, the, well, you, you talked about this, the, the Italian, the, yeah. and I had the, 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 well, I just walk a couple of hours. No? Uh -huh. I, I arrived by train at three and I have the meeting at five, then I had two hours to walk around with, uh, with a sandwich, you know? And um, I had the feeling that uh, the social activity, the life has changed a lot. That's obvious, of course, no? But somehow, somehow uh, that also means that people owning those villages has also changed, no? Uh, uh, mm. It's, uh, well, I have seen, let's say, huge cars, no? <laughs> and uh, shiny cars, no? Uh, all around, no? <coughs> These this villages showing that probably it's people like are coming on the weekends, no? Uh, families with the kids, no, like probably at the end of the school this midday, they just uh, were coming to right. the to the to the village, no, like this kind of holiday village or um, uh, weekend village, mm -hmm. we, we could say, no. Mm -hmm. And and then I asked, what are the people here working for, or what are they? Mm -hmm. Working, yeah, uh, and and uh, um, Roger explained me that m mostly related to tourism, uh, sports in relation to the to the to the mountains. No, mm -hmm. then it's not. And um, and what you said said and agriculture. <laughs> Roger said from time to time, but not that much. Then originally, probably 100 years ago, everybody was related to agriculture, and now they, it's not anymore. No? Right. Right. For me, the first visit was an abstract one. I remember a really early project by Herzog and de Moran, where they made a, a project in the Engadine. The Sills project? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was the first time I 
heard the word sgraffito. That's right. that, which was a theme they were exploring in that project. But my own first visit was probably about the same time that you came here, and it was really architectural tourism. Mm. Um, mm. You know, the emergence of the Graubünden as a part of Switzerland that had a very interest, uh, fascinating um, scene. And so we came to see, see that. And we were remembering the first time we came into the Engadin Valley, we um, were driving from Zurich, and it was a time when you still travelled with a, a paper map, not the iPhone. <laughs> and we were having a very uh, wonderful conversation in the car from Zurich. I mean, this amazing scenery, playing music. And, and at some point, just beyond Kloosters, we, the road was just a wall of snow. <laughs> and some people in a tavern just down the road came out and they said, what are you doing here? And we said, well, we're trying to get to the Engadine Valley. And they said, but didn't you read the signs on the highway all the way from Zurich saying that... Mm. The, <laughs> so rather sheepishly, we went back down the road and put the car on the... On the, uh, the train. Or train or and, and went... And it, that experience of going through this long tunnel was it made it feel like a kind of a, a magical world that you had to undertake a special journey to get to and i I mean I was reflecting that the three of us are all foreigners mm -hmm. and we 're all from islands <laughs> <laughs> and this this sense of the lure of the Alps is certainly something in my own cultural formation yeah. has a long-standing fascination you know the I, I mean I, I realized when I was coming here I was just reminded of how spectacularly beautiful the Engadine Valley is and there I am showing a Valley de Mugio which is a much softer kind of topography and <laughs> still beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I also like uh, recently so students asked me to what is the difference Japan and Switzerland? Yeah, we have an ocean. <laughs> 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 so you have a lake. So but I think uh, yeah, it's uh, like a boundary of the images it's mm. quite different. I think uh, maybe over the mountain everybody comes here to the valley, but we Japanese maybe England or so Mallorca always everybody comes to overseas, so it's very different. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but Jonathan, when you uh, uh, compare it now with the valley, uh, how is it? Mu valley de Mujo. Mujo. Mm. Um, uh, there, yeah, as you mentioned, there are obvious um, uh, differences, but maybe it it, it makes it m more easy for you to distinguish the mm. characteristic of this local architecture here. Where, where would you see these characteristics? Is it about the window? Is it about mm. the stone? And Ticino is also about stone, but it's... Uh, or maybe it's the combination of the wall and the window, or how the, the window is cut into the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said you traveled uh, uh, along several valleys in Graubünden, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's in a way uh, completely different here, you know? Mm. You, you don't have wooden structures. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, yeah, I, what what I is it about? And, and yeah. uh, <laughs> why is it like, like that? And can we repeat it? <laughs> That's I mean, then I, the <laughs> core I, question. I, I find that the privilege of otherness is an ability to see with a fresh eye that sure. those differences that are so clear, I think are quite immediately apparent. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm in Ticino, I know immediately I'm in the Italian-speaking world, which is different mm -hmm. to the German-speaking world. Um, Ticino has a different relationship to care and order. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of, it's a really prosaic observation, but it's always so striking to me the care that's taken with arranging logs <laughs> here in outside a house. I mean, this is, this is an act that is about ensuring that um, 
the winter is taken care of. And in Ticino, the climate is not as harsh. I mean, it is a place that emotionally I associate more with a feeling of holiday, whereas mm -hmm. here it feels much more powerful as, a, as an encounter with landscape and with settlement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I could just add one other thing, sure. which is why I was choosing to look at the Valley de Muggio, is for me, it is so precious. This mm. place cannot be squandered as a mm. piece of patrimony that mm -hmm. is held. And I, I look with a great deal of desperation when I tr take the train every week from Zurich to mm. Mendrisio, where the valley bottom is really just the worst form of urban mm. sprawl. So the, the plea is to take care um, with patrimony. And, sure. I, and I think there isn't the same pressure that exists here as, uh, for example, in Ticino. No, sure, I, I, I fully agree. But uh, uh, still, uh, yeah, it, if we have to add something, the mm -hmm. question is how, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Because I think climate is, is really a kind of a, a key mm. here, like in many other places, also climate, topography, um, um, landscape. So in, in my eyes, this architecture is in a way the, 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 the perfection towards a climate uh, mm. uh, condition. And... Um, yeah, what, what, what does that mean if we now start yeah, to, to carefully integrate new structures, if we want to repeat things if we, and so on, you know? but, but we do it with installation, you know, mm. and we do it without agriculture and so So what, what, what does it mean? How, how, can, how could we do that without being kitschy? You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, no, also the maybe, you uh, know, uh, importance is also like a uh, industrially uh, industrial so changing so transformation mm. so like uh, mm. for example um, I think architecture itself is also very important of course so, but also the yes I uh, know we see today so several village and then always like a house and the backside is uh, like a hay or more storehouse for animals and agriculture but after it's connected to the like a, a grass field for the cow field mm -hmm. so to so that's why so like uh, we a little bit stop to the edge of the the boundary mm -hmm. is a, a settlement part but i always try to ask to student this road how goes up towards the top of the mountain mm -hmm. because also the many um, Swiss village has also the summer, summer like a Bergen case or summer so cheese uh, area and also winter area or like a, they moving around and also like a, I was also uh, uh, study with the students so the long Ticino so uh, Sononio around so they also really historically they really moving up so the migrated everywhere so in uh, uh, using the depths of the whole valley so that's why so like uh, maybe um, Alps living condition traditionally so more like a dynamic to according to the seasonal so a settle so to uh, finding the good position of the agriculture good position the living mm -hmm. but uh, maybe like uh, now that I think it's become more rigid to because of the I don't know tax or like a living condition today, so that's why so like a dynamic of the usage of the land and the house it's a bit less than before. My, my feeling this is mm -hmm. so that that's why so like uh, if we started to change a new industrial things, what's happened? So because original material is very very different to use, but how we adapt. Uh, new content as a tourism or like uh, maybe we combine the different new agriculture so including the other tourisms mm -hmm. or maybe education program or culture program so how people can use utilize as um, historical um, mm -hmm. potential so for mm -hmm. more dynamic usage 
But of course, in this case, of course, in a common sense, like uh, for example, historically, maybe land was used more often common uh, use, or like a more cooperated use or yes. more dynamic use. But um, nowadays, I think land, uh, even if not only Switzerland, maybe in Japan and everywhere, so it becomes a more pri pri uh, uh, privatized. So that makes also a bit rigid of the uh, dynamic, <laughs> uh, not, you know, dynamic industry. So that's also like, a, I, I'm also wondering, so how we can escape from <laughs> this kind of uh, property issue, so also. Mm, it's a lot about pr yeah. uh, property issue yes. and um, economic yes. strength. Yes, so yes. Maybe you could tell us how, how you do it in, uh, on Mallorca, also, um, with your own projects. Uh, how, how, how do you we, deal with how traditional... We can, how we try to do it, okay. no? <laughs> no, but uh, yes, uh, I can. Uh, but I was going to introduce something else, no? Because you, you mentioned the word uh, climate. Um, but I think uh, at the end, Probably it's a question about balance, but let's be on a radical point, then we will get in agreement. Uh, the temperature of our beautiful Mediterranean Sea, the last 25 uh, years, increased uh, to great centigrade and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, we from Mallorca need uh, 15 islands to survive day by day. We have a footprint of 15, 1 to 15. Mm -hmm. That cannot continue. Mm -hmm. That's not the way to look at climate. Mm -hmm. If we have to build our buildings, for example, calculating our footprint, probably we will not be able to build such huge windows. You were asking, can this barn be substituted? You will not be able. And you, what we will need is to go not in a step back, but in a step forward looking back. No, It's, okay, which are the resources we have here? If we have a stone, we don't have to bring a stone from India. Probably there is no house with a stone from India in, <coughs> in the valley, but, but uh, as, a, as an example, no? Uh, if you don't have, I don't know, a, an industry of iron, producing iron, or if you need petrol to produce concrete, Mm -hmm. Concrete will be forbidden. Mm -hmm. Then, how you do a beam? Then that beam will be an horizontal lintel, kind of an arch with three stones. Then the size will reduce. Mm -hmm. No. Then, step by step, I think looking into this climate, but from the other side. Okay, I understand. You yeah. will give an answer <coughs> that will be completely local, that will be completely related mm -hmm. to the things you have seen before, mm -hmm. but not. In a folkloric way, yeah. not in a in a traditional way. I will say I feel that all of us we are we cannot say that we are not traditional. We all are because it's part of the process of the human being as sure. a society. No, then we are part of this progress. No, but um, I think what what we have to look is to look back to move forward. No. And then I want to introduce something else, no? It's a question of speed. Mm. Speed. No, it's we 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 as humans, no, the last century we did poof, I don't know, thousand times what they did in the old history mm -hmm. before, no? Then I don't know, we have to become a bit more I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a problem I think uh, the the Mm -hmm. The speed of this world, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I understood correctly, it's a lot about also in this idea of repetition and conti continuation with a kind of a tradition. It's it's a lot about craftsmen and material and construction rather than shape. So to say so. Well, it's also shape because uh, of course uh, there's a link, but no, there, there's the, a link. The, the, the specific form is not the starting point. Mm -hmm. to correct. No, yeah. no, yeah. not not the beauty of something. Right, right. In fact, I think it has also it's also related to uh, what uh, one of my questions: What are people here working with? No, mm. uh, are there many queries here? Extracting stone right now. I, I don't know about this. No, 
But for example, in, in Mallorca, we have this wonderful sandstone, the Mares, the ones you know from Jernudzon, we were talking about <laughs> Canlis. Um, uh, we did a workshop, I don't know, a lot of years ago, I don't know, about 20 or something, that was called 1,000 Queries. Mm. There were 1,000 queries in Mallorca. Mm, crazy, yeah. But perhaps the smallest one was <coughs> like this, no? I do a query to build my house. No? Mm -hmm. That's that's crazy, no, of course. Yeah. But nowadays, I have to tell you that if you want to use Mares, you have a problem because it's kind of a reverse situation. People started to, the young architects mainly, are um, convinced no, mm -hmm. of this situation, no? And it's starting to build with this, mm -hmm. and the queries that are working, still mm -hmm. working, they have an, um, a huge amount of work. Mm -hmm. Then that's a problem. No, 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 that's the solution, I think. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. If I have to use my res, I have to uh, move my phone, but I think that's, the, at the end, the, the, the solution, I mm -hmm. think. Because, on the other hand, the materials you have, the natural, the, this is magic, magic. Huh? The natural materials you have, on the place you build are an answer to the climate needs. For example, if we go to the north, to, 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 to Finland, no? they have forests, mm -hmm. they have trees, trees have fibers, they have air, they have isolation, they cannot be glued with mortar, they need to have dry joints, no? mm -hmm. because the weather there is wet, it doesn't dry. But there are in the south, we have stones, that the stones have hydroscopy, they kept the um, the, the, the cool, the the the, 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 the humidity, no? and, oh. and when and when the wind or the wind or the breeze crosses the house with this cross ventilation, mm -hmm. it uh, cools down the building. Mm -hmm. No, it mm -hmm. has a lot of inertia. Mm -hmm. It's built with wet uh, um, uh, constructive processes. No, then it's linked somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then right now the globalization somehow transformed in a crazy way, everything. You can do mm -hmm. everything everywhere mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. You can do um, a titanium museum in Bilbao. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to come back to something, Christian, you were mentioning before, which mm -hmm. is, you know, this, this dilemma. How do you deal with the contemporary situation, this material? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not romantic about the way people lived in this part of Switzerland in the past. It was <laughs> hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this question of how we make a contemporary building mm -hmm. with all of the techniques that we have mm -hmm. and all of the expectation of comfort that mm -hmm. is equated to contemporary life. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I always consistently enjoyed in your reviews with my students was this sense of being very resourceful with everything you used. Mm -hmm. But if you cut a piece of stone, what you cut off, you find another way of using. And I, I found that instructive. Mm. But as you know, the overall thematic, as um, I was referring to, was this sort of fascination with critical regionalism as, mm. a, as a possible answer to this. Mm. this kind of dichotomy that exists between a fascination with the qualities of place and trying to understand their origins, but the insistence that we are contemporary at the same time. And I think the demands on that contemporality are really changing as well. <laughs> and that's what you're really describing. Yeah, but I, I really love hearing to you to an introducing the um, regional criticism, not that of Kenneth Frampton you know, and all the stuff, but uh, if we have a look at uh, our beloved John Nudson, no? when he was building in Denmark, he was using bricks. In Mallorca, he was using uh, sandstone. Mm -hmm. And Alto was using uh, mainly uh, wood in Villa Maidea or wherever. No? Then I think it's also, uh, and there is no, no, if you want to be a, 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 this st style or whatever, have, you have to build like this or like that. No, there are many ways of becoming, you said also, authentic, no? Mm -hmm. at, at the end, uh, it's, it's related, it's not related to, there is no uh, formula no? To, to solve these questions. No, we have sure. a wide range of, of possibilities, no? But then again, what is authenticity? 
you know, as you as you list, it's it's a kind of complex matrix of totally. influences. It's, uh, I guess, mostly in imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really existing. Mm -hmm. It's an idea. Mm -hmm. But that also has, of course, uh, its value. So, yeah, I think these were now very interesting comments I, 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 I fully fully agree the question is if um, there is then or no I I have to turn it that way I believe it's it's not enough just to argue with material and mm -hmm. construction it's it's also about social and economic circumstances and I, I guess you argued in in that direction so mm -hmm. to find the synergies, you know, so that you don't have this kind of parallel culture of local culture, tourism and so. Um, I also I interpreted in your s sketch there was this kind of barrier. Uh, um, maybe you can t tell us a bit more how, how you want to break this barrier or barrier, what, what yes. kind of strate strategies yes. there could be. Because in, in my observation, there is a kind of a, also here an also asymmetry in it, you know, which makes it not so easy to to overlap it to get synergies. So just also because of economic yeah. differences, you know. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Well, now, now the, I think uh, not yet in Switzerland we did, but uh, my recently, ah, uh, well, maybe in Switzerland one case. I recently I in ETH summer workshop. I, yeah, because ETH is Henkeberg, there is one forest behind. Mm -hmm. And then last winter, they have a lot of uh, tree was torn down. Mm -hmm. So that's why, why not we start to make a building from this? And then I asked uh, one um, meal factory nearby in a carpent, um, the school. Mm -hmm. And then they, they said, okay, if you order, so exactly log how you want to slice, so they can cut for students. And then student design the 15 log, how you utilize make some things, and then they, start, well, they exchange it with a um, carpenter or a sawmill factory, and then they made it. And then well, recently <coughs> we realized a small um, pavilion on the campus. <laughs> The maybe like I think uh, this is of course my it takes time. I think I really agree. So like a little bit slow, but uh, of course it's not the same as um, <coughs> traditional way. But uh, students start to reach the uh, wow log. People can start to start to log, not the buying the uh, DIY shop to <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, already um, uh, sliced uh, some mm -hmm. uh, industrial element. Uh, so that's why so design becomes very different. Mm -hmm. So so maybe like uh, if I think uh, and also sometimes uh, I feel in this kind of area so there is a lot of material around more close from the like a mountain or a rock or a mm -hmm. timber and also carpenter or maybe like some other resources, active resources around or my former resources. And then if we go back to uh, there, so it also becomes a new industry mm -hmm. or like a new uh, innovation bit or exchange. So it's become more like a creative uh, so part so so that's why so now the my intention was more like how we can open up this process to become the more part of the new design approaches and uh, um, and also maybe like it also could be including the agriculture too or like uh, tourism or maybe like uh, go to snow snow ski mountain or I don't know everything we can more be connected mm -hmm. then we call uh, actor network so my, like uh, Bruno Rattel explains so but uh, maybe so this kind of new network finding the how to engage in uh, uh, situation so that, that that I think also key of the uh, projects. So that's why, so like a recent research is quite important to discover what the resource exists and what kind of potential or what 
um, what part or the um, not an unconscious part, so for <coughs> example, in the uh, area. So how we can bring it together or matching. So that, that I think also the one of the method of the design of the architecture. And uh, yeah, I hope. <laughs> yes, but I, I need to more research about on this, what I can do the, here so in Gadin, so I need to more research, but yes. Is it okay? Uh, I mean, uh, I, <laughs> for me, it always comes back to the question, is there a need to build? You know, it's... A need is to it, build? Or is the population increasing? Mm. Is uh, there a changing circumstance that requires building? I mean, as was said, you know, in the post-war period, more has been built in the world than in all of the building of humanity. I mean, this is staggering. So, you know, um, when I'm talking with students, the emphasis is always that your careers are going to be about reuse before they're about mm. <laughs> any thoughts of creating new buildings. Mm -hmm. this, this is clear. Um, you know, if you... Years ago in the Mendricio, we worked in San Moritz, which I must say at first was a bit heartbreaking because, you know, it is a strange reality. Um, you know, very seasonal. Uh, the, mm. the population changes from throughout the year. Um, questions about the need to increase the number of houses, which is, of course, in a way, one of my fascinations, uh, felt uh, unnecessary. And, you know, the, the question for me is, in such a strange place, what, what can you do meaningfully as, as architects? Um, mm. I think here, it's in this part of the Engadine, I think it's somehow purer. Mm. Um, somehow tourism doesn't have such an ugly face, I, I find. And, you know, your references to the impact of tourism in Mallorca are staggering. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, on one hand, it, it's brought a livelihood to the islanders, but it, it comes at a price. And here I feel like it's much better managed. Probably it's, it's another moment, no? Mm -hmm. Where we have some experiences, no? Mm -hmm. We were like the first in the row, no? Mm -hmm. And then we pay the, the, the first... Um, uh, that that first moment, no. Uh, <clears throat> of course, I, I, the image is not all around in Mallorca, no. Uh, if you come, I will show you some nicer places, no. <laughs> but uh, the, the the problem is the 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 way they manage. They no, we manage when we do this. We manage the 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 the, the territory, not the landscape, the territory mm -hmm. itself, no. And mm -hmm. uh, pr probably it. Mm, the first question we need to ask to ourselves is do we need to build more in certain circumstances of course yes no but uh, nowadays that everybody talks about recycling i think first before recycling is to reuse no mm -hmm. and to understand what happens with these uh, huge uh, houses you have here in the engadin mm -hmm. probably i don't know they could be, probably they were before the animals, the family, they have a lot of children. Nowadays the family has changed a lot. No? They, mm. It can be transformed into something different, no? I don't know. Can be perhaps divided somehow, I don't know how, no? But if they are empty, no? I saw a lot of this kind of burns, no? But totally em empty, no? Like with no use, no? Mm. And it's such a volume that could be somehow uh, reused, no? Jonathan, to come back to your comment, I, I think it's not um, uh, this pure condition here in the lower part of the valley is not the result of a better management than in the upper part. It's just a, a big luck that this part was for a very long time too far away from mm -hmm. Zurich. You know, before the tunnel exists, when, when I was a child, we had five hours to mm -hmm. come here, you know, and now you have two. So and and uh, this this uh, makes a big difference. So for a long time it was just too far away, too remote, uh, uh, too remote, right? So so there was not much acquisition of property from uh, mm. abroad, from uh, people from abroad. 
Um, I, I think that's that's the reason. And of course, now we live in a different time. We have we have a limitation of second homes. We have a, a, a better uh, p planning that limits the the, the boundaries, uh, limits the, the the zones where you can build and so. Um, I think it's, it was just a good good luck uh, in in that part of the valley. But um, I don't know how Roger sees it, but. I, I think in the last 15 years, you, nevertheless, you have kind of a, a, a big transformation inside the, the, the inherited structure. Mm -hmm. Also, as I mentioned, in, in, in the form of um, second, second homes. And um, yeah, the, 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 qu the question still is, also how can one um, create the kind of synergy that it's not just an uh, empty mm. shell in the end. I don't know. Can I uh, pick Should, up this? Because yeah, I please, feel really please. provoked um, <laughs> as a foreigner who owns a second home in <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> you know, I, I can square that. You know, I, this 350-year-old house that we restored, I think if we hadn't done it, I wonder if it would have happened. So, I mean, I think sure. that uh, now it's, of course, uh, you know, in English you always say you should never speak about politics or religion. And this question of second home ownership is a political issue. And for me, it seems like a bit of a blunt instrument, that mm -hmm. it's like one thing or another. And I think it, it doesn't have a capacity to be um, locally... Uh, a good fit. Mm. No, of course. Mm. I, I wanted to be provocative. To, yes. uh, yeah, I was provoked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> animate a bit yeah. the, uh, the reanimate the discussion. No, I mean, um, sure. Uh, that's also. Why I think the, you know. I, I think cultural influx from abroad is always po positive. That's why I made this mm. periodization. Mm. I think that the Engadine is is not the Engadine without the Grand Hotel, the history of the Grand Hotel, and so on. You know, I think it it is a lot about uh, foreigners. Th the only question is how how can we create these yes. synergies? You know. Yeah, I, I think uh, maybe like a uh, well, secondary home means uh, like. Uh, to home, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and, and that, that means, of course, uh, I think that is also a nice potential, one hand. So yes. Because yes. Uh, if we, people come to, like, a foreign, uh, another city or another part, but uh, they really contribute in the locally, mm -hmm. like, uh, so for example, like a seasonal worker, or I don't know, sometimes uh, Switzerland has uh, like a grape making wine, and then they need a hand, and the high school students help to <laughs> the crafting the things, or maybe also ski teacher coming to the teaching, so to from city center mm -hmm. to the mountain, so to certain seasonal things. But uh, if they are, everybody have a very responsible mm -hmm. their role to the locally more like a, not just the consumer so it's more like a involved uh, some um, responsibility mm -hmm. so that i think very important part for as uh, names if you mm -hmm. say okay secondary home yeah this is home so one of you so, mm -hmm. so that's why so if you this is your hometown why not do you contribute a more, much better situation? Okay. That, that is, I think, my maybe mentality. And then many people want to involve in uh, some certain secondary home part. Mm. But maybe like uh, sometimes it has a bit <coughs> uh, distance between local, really local mm. uh, community and uh, secondary home community. Maybe so like in Japanese case, sometimes uh, uh, different uh, so group mm -hmm. so that uh, so they cannot easily to meeting together yeah. to reach uh, some nice goal so so that's why so maybe like okay. uh, this is mm -hmm. one things and then also the another things uh, for me Switzerland house is quite big than Japanese house <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe I, uh, also the it's also people can more share the, some spaces mm -hmm. one part or like maybe around the entrance or some area mm -hmm. they can also more like open to others to different use for example like uh, if 
yeah, house, in this case, architecture not should be changed, might be keeping the same form, but the usage, or maybe like uh, benches, for example, or I don't mm -hmm. know, like uh, some small part of but the usage it could be changed to open up the more exchangeable the pot, uh, potential. But are there uh, examples of such sharing? Yeah. Thing? Or is this more a wish that you uh, no, have? No, no, for example, like uh, now, uh, for example, I have a in in Japan. It's a rural area has a more different situation. For example, like uh, we decrease in the population. Yes, and we are island. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So some part is really an age society, and then traditionally, so the rural area keeping the more common. Uh, uh, yeah, common uh, collective uh, uh, sustainability, like uh, for the day cutting the like maintenance of forest together, mm. or like uh, maintenance uh, mm. some mm. Uh, bees or uh, like uh, grass field and so on. So that's kind of things. But uh, unfortunately, the beauty of the Japanese uh, landscapes now that it's will be collapsed because of the shortage of the. Um, supporters, mm -hmm. and then now the, I think many uh, Japanese kids they try to sub, uh, like uh, invite the young generation to come to stay and also exchange and mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. let them understand the cultural mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So like uh, sometimes, but now Yoshiro and me also involved in one project, like a uh, one abandoned, so like uh, a fork house, so the farmhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, how renovate with uh, many people, more two hundred different kind of people coming to mm -hmm. renovate together, and right. uh, yeah, also mm. the including the landscape and the new commerce and also art things. Yes. So the building uh, renovation is including the landscape and the forest and also the <laughs> bamboo <laughs> forest. <laughs> so all. Uh, Every process brings to the new small commerce or new business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that means the end, the really collective uh, artwork, mm -hmm. including the agriculture to the cooking and also architecture things. So okay. maybe so this is one exchange through uh -huh. the architecture innovation, so to yeah. understand each other. But at the same time, the, I think many uh, young generation, um, or maybe my, my, me too also, that we are very um, enthusiastic to into this kind of uh, some uh, hand, uh, uh -huh. uh, no, hands-on so feelings so to, to get a more like uh, embodiment of the thinking and uh, nature into our uh, life and experience. Yeah. So, so that's why so tendency, yeah, many Japanese architects start to create uh, this kind of uh, renovation mm. project. So yeah. the, it's really interesting so for us. To, we learn a lot, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> As we should all do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, um, maybe to, to raise a, a last uh, complex or question. Um, I, I know we, we shouldn't talk too much about potentials because we do that, you do that tomorrow. But um, um, in, in, in my eyes, uh, such a, a valley which is still a kind of an entity, not closed of course, but it's a special topographical entity, could also be... Um, could be seen as a laboratory mm. for um, alternative forms of living, forms of um, economy. I, I come to that because you brought in this idea of, of sharing and doing things together and so. And um, yeah, one could ask, what, what, what does it mean here? Uh, uh, when I'm correctly informed, um, uh, there was once uh, uh, a kind of experiment. Uh, there were actually for a certain period, an early period, no cars. The car was not allowed. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there was only the, the train and of course horses and so on. But mm -hmm. <laughs> the car was f forbidden and um, I, I once thought it's, it's a pity that this uh, um, was then opened at a certain uh, time, and um, one one could 
think of, of similar experiments concerning the issue of property, for instance. Mm. Also, why, uh, why is, uh, c couldn't we have a, a laboratory in Switzerland where we don't have this bloody private property and, you know, I pay more and I, then I get it. And so why couldn't we more think about you know, sharing or a common ground of this almond uh, I, I, uh, idea that was in agriculture uh, uh, an important thing? Why, why isn't that mm. uh, not any more possible in, in, a, in a modern yeah. contemporary world? Also, I, I really find this simple barrier in your sketch mm. was uh, <laughs> touched me. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I, I think also, like, uh, for example, Venice, no? So Venice uh, totally avoided the car, so, no? Like Venice, uh, Italy. Okay, for other reasons. <laughs> yeah, that but, reason. uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I think uh, like this also maybe car-free so island, so it's also very in interesting yes. so experience. Uh, and then also like uh, we can keep the some or maybe children so don't care about the uh, car and that they can running around so more easy to very gentle so for kids and the elderly everybody or like uh, maybe also the yeah but i don't know termat also that they are car free so right yes. yeah it's it's interesting that sometimes just one perimeter mm. changes the whole kind of system or or living so yes and then so in that case maybe street becomes more like more so very open space and gentle and more we can each use as a, a potential of the, the street as a more public space or common spaces. Yeah, so maybe like um, also the if somebody start to make a, have a problem, maybe only time share it's also mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. like uh, or weekend or I don't know exactly, but uh, uh, more like a f kind of a free uh, definition of the usage and the agreement and maybe also the once I did also one uh, city so town to s square so we test maybe one one week or how it works <laughs> or like uh, maybe this as you said the laboratory so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some sh certain moment so the testing certain idea and collect the um, feedback mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm we need to change, so mm. slowly we change. So the, this kind of interactive test case might be uh, convincing to many people and also like understanding the effect, mm -hmm. uh, real one-to-one -one model <laughs> cases. So that I think also maybe this kind of uh, scale. So mm -hmm. it's very, very somehow so locally so can challenge, I think. Mm -hmm. So that is also very great potential. So my big city may be a bit more difficult, but... Uh, right, has. that's why I said uh, uh, this kind of the entity of a valley would mm. be a perfect field mm. you know, to yes. test alternative forms uh, for society, economy that could then probably mm. also influence cities, you know, kind of mirrored back. You know? Yes, I think so. I think uh, yeah, it would also be interesting to talk with John Caminado about that. Mm. Christian, in your previous work, you were involved in Studio Basel's <laughs> study of That's Switzerland. True. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, as an urban person, one of the propositions that I think was the most controversial was the questioning of the incredible effort that goes into maintaining the Alps. Mm -hmm. And I remember the most polemical proposal that came out of this work was to say, ah, just <laughs> leave it to nature. It, mm. it, 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 uh, there were many brilliant ideas that came out of that study, but that was one that every time I travel through these regions, I think, what would happen if we weren't here? How quickly would nature overrun all of the efforts, the great effort that's sure. been taken to, to organize the territory. 
that have shall I react <laughs> to this? You don't need to, but it's, it's I mean, because it's, 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 it's more true, of it was, a, it, yeah. it, it, it's true. Uh, it, 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 that was, the, I think, the biggest uh, provocation mm -hmm. in it. But it's it's not true that um, it, it was that there was an idea of less affair. It mm -hmm. was just to 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 question some um, processes that really have also absurd. Mm. <laughs> characteristics and you know to also the question if if we can accept more nature and um, we have seen that Swiss people do not accept more nature or nature at all maybe it's it's um, it's really about control also not even in parts you know you could say okay maybe the last end of a valley we <laughs> nature can come back but this was is impossible in our mentality this was interesting to not see. in Ticino <laughs> because the <laughs> thing that my students were recording was you know when you've got a supermarket in Chiasso that <laughs> and you're not reliant on the terraces, they quickly get over, overrun and no one takes care yeah, of them. Yeah, sure. So it, is, it happens, it's of, not, course, of course. Yeah. Well, it's just not that black and white, that's my point. Mm -hmm. mm. I agree. Shom, mm. a uh, uh, final word from your side? No, I have the feeling that um, some of the last ideas um, are very nice, but economy doesn't have friends. Then <laughs> if, if if one of these huge houses costs three million and something, um, uh, Mayo said before, that the one in front of your house, no? How mm. can we transform it into sharing young people and oh, it, it's, it's a bit tough. But on the other hand, I was having in mind uh, that in the French part of Switzerland, well, the, the part I know b better, not that much, but uh, slightly better. Um, right now, the, the, the Fribourg area, no? the, Fribourg, the Canton Fribourg, mm -hmm. it's just starting to be somehow um, it's starting to grow with young families, let's say, that are not allowed to pay living next to the lake. Mm -hmm. Then they are moving to the rural, no? Mm. Uh, as a, well, where there is not identity, of course, it's not a valley, it's something different, but probably there are villages that I don't know that, that they are super incredible and powerful and. Mm -hmm. Uh, in these terms that we are talking, no, mm -hmm. and probably they are growing. They have new schools mm -hmm. because these these movements of the society that uh, overall it's uh, economy at the end. No, mm -hmm. it's uh, difficult to f to fight. You cannot fight against this. No, Bec we also have this problem of people from abroad coming to Mallorca. You you know it. No, uh, and what happens? You, you cannot fight. No, uh, I agree. That's why I brought in this mm -hmm. idea. One should maybe mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. this kind of laboratories, mm -hmm. because you know, within the existing system, we can, of course, we can think about the stone and how how we, you know, how beautiful it is and so, but um, uh, it doesn't care the system. You know, it doesn't change anything. So um, yeah, that would be. Mm. Yeah, that would be um, interesting. So yes, I, I think maybe like uh, no, economy. <laughs> like it's a great, great, a in, interesting things. But uh, same time, maybe like recently, yeah, Switzerland has a lot of rich p people, no? So that's why so we can also ask some fund <laughs> from them to, to. You mean for such experiments or? Yeah, well, experiment or fund or I don't know, like uh, maybe some very kind rich person to. Support. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know, but or another Monteverdi. <laughs> but but uh, yes, uh, yeah, like, uh, maybe like um, yes, I uh, know how we. Well, it's also part of the politics, but maybe like how we find a good meaning of the frame of the this kind of recovery. So not only personalize the pay the rich by the rich house, more than like a cultural some important meaning, so if... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, when I was saying to 
intervene in this uh, valley, um, let's say, cutting a stone by a stone, that has to be uh, difficult and expensive. If someone pays three million and a half for a house, uh, can be part of the effort to become mm -hmm. local, to re-change the direction, no? If you have to cut one stone, it's expensive. But if after you, someone else cuts another one, uh, then mm -hmm. perhaps the stone becomes very popular, as it was. Mm -hmm. As it, it as it becoming in Mallorca. And on the other hand, you have something that is something also related to um, uh, economy of means, but it's also related to uh, uh, not only l local resources, it's part of the resources, it's the net of people that are working there. That's why I was asking to, to Roger before, what are they working with? They are working with people from abroad, mm -hmm. with the tourists coming to, 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 to ski or to... But, um, but not from with people from here, you know. Um, that could be more kind of an, uh, an ecosystem, no? A, a full ec ecosystem, I think, to come back to this full ecosystem. That somehow during the COVID started, but at the end, once again, economy is mm. pushing cars to them. <laughs> okay. Um Maybe a last word, or is there a time frame, or sh yeah, should we open the discussion? It's a bit, it's a bit dark for us. We don't, yeah, don't see them totally. <laughs> yeah, I would say if it's you empty. have some question or comments, maybe comments, more. yeah. Can we? Yes. <laughs> Um, I was very glad to hear the emphasis on material and for the identity. It, I was missing that uh, yesterday a little bit. Um, and you were talking about the quarries. And here it's the limestone. And um, this is also a project that uh, started in Nyers 2017, <coughs> where they restored uh, uh, burning often a lime uh, kiln and burned lime again. Mm -hmm. And now uh, last year we made a um, association that again and that tries to bring that knowledge back because mm -hmm. with the train um, there came also uh, cement and mm -hmm. the knowledge was is vanished. Mm. And it is, uh, in fact, that you find still the ovens, you, s you still find them in the, in the landscape, and there's about 50, 200, mm. and they are invisible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what we try to um, bring identity back, to bring the material back, mm. to um, repair the houses or also make new identity. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really scary how little people know how to build with this material. And um, it's obvious the, how it shapes here, the, um, what we love, what we see, that it is so um, rich in what you can do with this material. Uh, yeah, that's, we're working on that <laughs> to, to spread it again. I'm happy to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Someone else? Some more comments. Ich könnt auf Deutsch. Wir werden es übersetzen. More questions. Okay. If not. Uh, it's fine. Uh, thank, I would like to thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to have that little discussion tonight. And I hope we continue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.